So hey, YouTube. It's been just about a year since I first started using the Gazelle T4 Overland Edition tent. And from most people's perspective, I do mostly inclement weather type camping. And I've had, uh, you know, great camping trips with this tent. It's been a fantastic addition. So it fits my specific needs. It may not fit your specific needs. I'm going to talk about some data points, mostly uh, weight, size, and cost. Uh, and then I talk about some of the uh, some of the rumors out there on the internet about the T4, and you'll have to be your own judge. But I just wanted to let you know my experiences with the tent and what I've found. So hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube, uh, I'm out on the property at my campsite. Looks a little bit different. We uh, are working on getting the build going for the new house and. Uh, Unfortunately, my campsite was the best spot. I, I absolutely love it for camping, but I'm gonna love it even more for uh, for my house. So uh, there are a couple of trees on the back side of the property there that uh, kind of scraggly looking pines. And even though we had the the builder with an excavator clear the, the bulk of the trees here, the uh, there were a couple trees back there that I took down myself. So I came out this weekend to uh, kind of clean up some of the some of the mess, chop up some of the trees, stack up some firewood, and uh, just to kind of enjoy myself. Hadn't been camping in a while. I'm not a big summer camper. I'm out here because I got work to do. Uh, normally I like the fall, especially the winter and spring if it's nice, uh, kind of camping. But it has been a year since I've used the Gazelle T4 Overland tent and I really like it. Um, I mentioned in my initial thoughts that uh, I don't do reviews, guys, because I'm not that experienced. I don't have 27 different tents, although I've actually got quite a few. But uh, I, I don't, I don't have the desire to go through all the specs and talk about every single little detail. So I just don't do reviews. I do impressions, right? So after a year, I want to leave you with my impressions of the tent and talk about some things that I've heard others talk about on the internet uh, regarding the, the gazelle tents, not specifically the T4, but just gazelle tents in general. So one of the things I ran across, I was talking to somebody and they asked me for a tent recommendation. And I mentioned that, that I like this tent. Um, is they were concerned they had heard that if the heavy wind blows that this sidewall will collapse because of the hub design but as you can see i could push on that pretty hard and it is not going to collapse you can also guy it out just in case but i was out this winter in 25 mile an hour sustained winds and i never once thought i needed to get out and guy it out i i just i, I didn't see the need for it so it's uh it's been a fantastic tent that I mentioned. It's expensive, yeah. It's like four or five hundred dollars, whatever in the world it is. Uh, but it sets up really easy when you're by yourself. It took me a couple of minutes to get camp set up when I came in today, and I usually do most of my camping solo. So another problem, and a lot of people have talked about this, and this is true. The door is shaped weird because there's the hub system has metal structure right here. So you kind of have to do the door like this right so what happens is it's a little high up here so especially when you're carrying stuff loading stuff your gear in your tent uh, you got to be careful because you'll trip over that lip that's really narrow and it's up kind of high so I mentioned that in my initial impressions and then the zippers and this is kind of a pain but it's a double-edged sword really so you've got self-repairing zippers right and they've got a tab a zipper piece on the inside and the outside of course because you've got to be able to open it and close it from the inside but a lot of times you're hunting for these zippers to get the, the right one and you wind up getting both of them or the, the wrong one and just pull the zippers and move it around and the inside screen is the exact same way right so it takes a little getting used to i've heard people talk about color coding them I just think it's an inconvenience and I get used to it and I deal with it. So it's not that big of an issue, but I felt that I would mention it. So I got my gear just kind of strewn about in here. You can see it's a, a mess from the last time I was out. I had to pack up pretty quick and get out of here. And unfortunately, because we're building the house, I don't have the... Um, I sold my house. I'm living in a rental and the rental doesn't have a lot of room to be able to pop this tent up and, and clean it. 
um, and I'll kind of talk about some of that in, in just a minute. But one of the things I heard on the internet was that the mesh for the screens was too tight a weave and it didn't allow ventilation. I haven't really experienced that. Uh, I think it's fine. It, it doesn't allow bugs in and I seem to get good ventilation through it. Uh, right now it's a little warm in here because there's really not much of a breeze. It's about 75 degrees and um, it, I'm in, out in full sun. Obviously I'm sitting out on the on the build site. So I, I don't seem to think that's a problem. It's got good mesh up top underneath the uh, fly. I could guy the fly out and, and provide a little bit more room there. But I keep my fans. These are lights, uh, LED lights with fans, uh, rechargeable. I love rechargeable stuff more so than battery stuff. Um, and that's going to give me enough ventilation. I don't sleep well in the heat. I'm more of a cold guy. So it's a little challenging. Uh, another thing I heard was really fit and finish. So they talked about threads, right? So all the stitching threads were hanging loose everywhere. Um, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't have that issue with this particular tent. Now, maybe I got the perfect tent. I don't know. But I have not had any problems with the fit and finish. It seems very well constructed. I don't have loose threads. Another thing that was mentioned, kind of in the same vein, was pinholes. As you can see, I got the light shining through. There are no pinholes. And I took this tent down for a three-day four-wheel drive excursion in Uwari down in North Carolina. And it rained the whole time we were down there. Never had a problem with leaks, which is another complaint, probably because of the pinholes. Um, never noticed any water in the tent whatsoever. Everything was fine. And so, I, I, once again, I'm not sure. Did I just get the, the perfect tent? I don't know. Uh, all I know is it holds up really well. And then because of the, the dirt, because I, I tend to do camping, and I'm running back and forth, traipsing in and out. This sand mat that I'm using helps quite a bit. It's designed to go out and get the, the loose debris off your feet when you're at the beach. Um, I've been using it for a little while, picked it up on Amazon, um, but you still wind up tracking stuff in. And if it's wet, this, most of this is from the last time I was out, it was wet and I tracked in a bunch of stuff. So one time I had that problem and I unvelcroed. This is, the, the floor of the tent is velcroed to the side. And I had heard people say that don't undo it because you'll never get it back correctly. But I really didn't have any problem. I felt that it would be easier to clean. It was very dirty. And I wanted to just run it through a cold water wash in my washer at home. And so I pulled it off. You line up these little red tabs, one's on the tent and one's on the floor. And then you just follow around and re-Velcro it down. And it's nice and tight, no issues whatsoever. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of interesting things said about the uh, the gazelle tents. But uh, as I said, I'm pretty happy with mine. You know, is it a perfect tent? Well, no. It's like 57 pounds. It's big and heavy. Uh, so, and we'll talk about how you how you towed them here in a second. Close this back up. I don't want all the bugs to get in. But. Uh, <laughs> It's good tent. It's got the little flaps that cover the zipper from the top side. Um, and then the overlap down here so that water will run off. It seems to, seems to work really well. Um, just overall, it's a, a, a really good tent. Some of the best tent stakes I've ever seen. This is some pretty rocky soil. And uh, these, these tent stakes work really well. So just overall, I'm, I'm pleased with the tent. So like I said, it's expensive, it's heavy. And it's large, so it's very long. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how long it is, but most people, like uh, folks in four-door Jeeps, they can get it in their Jeep, but it's awkward. So they have to let down the back seats and then put the tent at an angle across the, the back cargo area. Um, so it, it's difficult. And even in my Gladiator, and I have a little less problem than, than some, but uh, I found that it was awkward because of my fridge I could set it in end to end and it would go, but then it really hogs up my floor space and it makes it awkward to get the rest of my stuff packed. When I go camping, I usually have quite a bit of stuff with me. So um, I recently discovered uh, American Adventure Labs, a company I've dealt with a number of times. I bought a number of pieces of gear for my truck from them. Um, 
pretty good company. They're a little expensive for shipping, but they make some pretty cool products. So they sell what they call the sleeper keeper. And these brackets, you lay the tent long ways. It goes out to the end of the last rail there, and it comes back, and it sits probably about this far to the back, right? And it's nice and secure side to side. It's got a little lip here, kind of holds it in. You get two of them. They ran about $60. With shipping, it was like $85. Um, but they're, they're a really good product. So combined with another product that I... I did an initial impressions on uh, probably a year ago. They uh, they work fantastic. So let me set the camera up here. This is a roller cam, and you can look back through my videos. I did a quick review on this and the roller ropes. Both products are really good. This is more of the heavy duty thing, right? So this is the three foot strap. So all you have to do once you lay the tent down in the bracket is feed this through. Then you push your lever, feed the strap through, put it around the roller, and you just strap it down. And that is tight. That's not going to come loose on you. If you if you want a little extra security, you can always kind of tie the end of the strap around. But I use two, one on the back, one on the front, and this works perfect. I love these things. They're quick, easy, very secure. Um, I've used the hell out of them. Now I use the longer version. I have got about a, a nine foot version that i use that i would strap all the way across but i would feed it through these holes and then loop it over loop it through the the tent structure the the big velcro straps and the carry straps on the tent to make sure it's secure and then lash it through here and then i've got some other bags that i would put over here and i'd lash those all down and it took quite a bit of time but today i just got these installed last week so first time i've used them but um, I was able to throw the tent up here, strap it down in almost seconds. It, it's that quick. Now, this comes unassembled. It comes with all the hardware, and you have to assemble it. Not a big deal. And they have the bolts included to be able to fit it to the rack. Now, the bolts that they include are about the same as what you see here. They're not very big. And they, there's no way they were going to hold through this. The, the head of the bolts just would slide right through that. So I actually went out and purchased my own bolts, bolted it down. There's five, yes, five holes. So I was able to find a fitment that worked for me, but they're all in a line. So I, I don't know if it would work for you. You'd have to evaluate what kind of rack you've got. But if you've got a rack on any kind of vehicle, you should be able to work out some type of a system to be able to mount these and just make sure like these are grade eight bolts, uh, make sure they're steady because you don't want your $500 tent flying off the back and you certainly don't want it to kill somebody on the expressway. But um, really good system, I really like these. So, hey, I'm gonna sit down and enjoy the rest of my, uh, my evening. I have been out there chopping wood all day long, so I'm a little bit tired. So see you on the next video. So hey, there you go. It's not a backpacking tent. It's big, it's heavy, it's expensive. But if you're car camping and you've got the money and the room, this is a great tent, especially if you're solo camping. It sets up really easy. There's lots of room in it. It's got a lot of windows, it's got two doors. Uh, it's worked out really well for me in all my camping. I've probably done 15 different camping trips in all kinds of weather. So there you go. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, uh, do so please. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.